Uh, we do have a lot of uh, action items and business to cover tonight. So our meeting is uh, first broken up into a public hearing. This is the uh, fourth public hearing that we've had on our animal, uh, animal care ordinances that we've been working on since the end of January. Uh, we've had really good feedback and participation in this process. Uh, by state law, we're only required to actually have two public hearings to do with any type of ordinance change. But we wanted the citizens of Walker County to have a seat at the table, to have input, uh, to have dialogue with us, to help us make sure that these uh, changes that we're making are in the best interest of our county and that the vast majority of the citizens are well served and support what we're doing. Uh, anytime you put an ordinance in place, they're never 100% perfect. But we've done uh, our very best with public input uh, to try to get these things as best we can. So they are living documents that over time can be uh, amended and changes made to them. From all indications, it does not appear that the animal ordinance has been touched since sometime in the mid-70s. And so there was a lot of things in the current animal care ordinance that uh, was not uh, properly aligned as time has changed with state law. Uh, there was many things that were missing and some things that were very outdated uh, and some things with uh, uh, medical technology for animal care as far as uh, immunizations for animals and things that uh, this ordinance had gotten way behind on the time of technology. So at this time, we need our list of people that have uh, signed up to speak. David, you have that? If you could bring that to uh, Joe. And, uh, what we're going to do here tonight, if you are... Uh, on this list, Joe will call out your name, and what we're going to ask you to do, this first public hearing uh, is to talk about the animal care ordinance only. Uh, we've got another hearing after this about a zoning request, and then once we go through those, if you've got a copy of the agenda, then we'll move into our regular scheduled meeting, and uh, we have some action items and some resolutions and proclamations that we'll sign tonight. And then at the end of that meeting, we will open up the floor for any public comment on any, any topic pertaining to local government here in Walker County. So some of you are uh, prepared to speak about other topics or have other questions. We'll do that at the very end. Uh, this first agenda session here is to address any questions, concerns, input on the animal care ordinance that uh, has been placed on the website. Any of you that have your smartphones or devices, you can see the address on the agenda under the Walker County GA government uh, tab. So at this time, if you will call the first person and due to uh, being able to video this and also making sure everybody can see and hear who's speaking, when your name's called out, we ask you that you make your way up to the podium uh, so you can properly address the group. Amy Finley. Uh, my name is Amy Finley and I live in Walker County and I've been here since 2007. Uh, we have uh, about a, we have large piece of property and our problem is, is uh, we have a lot of people that have hunted illegally on our property and um, in particular we have a problem with coon hunters. Uh, they in particular uh, of course, I know that's not all of them, but these people have taken it upon themselves to just hunt on our property because they always have. And we have had, we've signed the uh, agreement with the uh, Georgia, <coughs> uh, that's the, uh, what's the name DNR, of it? DNR. The DNR. And so when we find anyone hunting our, our property, we're talking deer, Turkey, I don't care what it is. We call them and they come arrest them. We have it on there where the person will be arrested and we do prosecute. We were told that we had no choice. It didn't matter who they were. Um, <clears throat> and uh, I find it really a problem uh, when a, for example, uh, number three, while on the owner's property, off the owner's property, excuse me, uh, if the dog should kill a domestic animal provided, however, 
subparagraph shall not apply where the death of such domestic animal is caused by a dog that is working, training as a hunting dog, herding dog, or predator control dog. A predator control dog is going to be on the property of the owner of the animal that it's protecting. It's not going to be on my property. The herding dog is going to be herding cows or sheep. It's not going to be on my property. So the hunting dog is the problem. And it can be on my property hunting coons. <coughs> so this is where the problem is. We have had we had one instance where the person put the coon dog out on the road and it ran through our pasture, <coughs> scared our horses. They all went through the fence. I don't know if you know you know what it is when they go through electric and barbed wire fences what happens mm. and so we had to have the veterinarian out we ended up euthanizing the horse <coughs> something needs to be done about this and uh, we've had other instances as well uh, it was in the middle of the night and i heard all this ruckus at the barn and i looked down there and there was all these flashlights at my barn doing this. Okay. I went down there and it was two older gentlemen hunting their coon dogs and trying to shoot that coon out of the barn with my horses going wild. Okay. Now there needs to be now the game warden got them. Okay. So that's what I'm telling you. It's really bad, and we've had other instances as well. The coon hunters actually told the game warden that he was a liar in front of the judge. Now, you know that one over good, don't you? They said they weren't hunting on our property. And the game warden said, you were too, because I know their property was. So <clears throat> they had to pay a fine. But this really, something really needs to be taken care of. We're actually being terrorized. That's how I put it. It's terrorism. It's being terrorized. That you're quietly sitting in your house, and then all this chaos happens outside, and you go out there, and it's somebody's coon <coughs> dog running coons on your property. We own both sides of the creek. We own 60, 60 acres on one side of the creek and 60 acres on the other side of the creek. And then the national forest is behind that. So they think that, see, we're not going to cross the creek and we're not going to call the game warden. But they're wrong because we will. And we have and we've gone to court and we will continue to do so. But I find this right here really offensive because I want to know who's, they should have to pay for that horse. They caused it. They should have to pay for the fences the horse is knocked down and everything else. Those two dogs ran through our property when we were watching television. We were minding our own business in our house. So, but I mean, that's not, and I mean, there's been many instances. Okay, let me let our uh, attorney address you. But I'd side. like to know why, and also I want to know why, right here, the uh, domestic, uh, domestic animal means dogs, cats, sheep, horses, cattle? And then right over here, livestock is the same thing. I don't understand that. It doesn't make any sense to me. Um, and uh, I mean, are they allowed to hunt from the roads? From DNR said they're not, but you know that's not addressed in here either. And so there's some conflicting things that I see with the state rules versus what y'all are doing, trying to do here. Also, I want to know what consequences are going to be held as far as um, uh, you know like people leaving their animals in the cars and all I mean what kind of consequences are they going to do with that and also like <clears throat> I mean there's a lot of things I have questions about this really it says any animal that damages soils defiles defecates on any property other than that of its own owner well there goes a hunting dog right there uh, and uh, let's see, chases, attacks, 
I mean, I, they chased the horses. Okay, let me let our attorney address your concerns, okay? Pat Williamson. Ms. Finley? Yeah. Ms. Finley, uh, first of all, let me ask for some clarification. Were you referring, when you were talking about the exception for hunting dogs to section 1066? Uh, it says, well, it doesn't say 1066 on here. It says uh, custodian means a person in care or supervision of an animal is placed. It should also mean any person who cares for a stray dog or cat or abandoned animal. And it says a dangerous dog means that any dog, and it says number three, while off the owner's property kills a domestic animal provided. And see, they're considering a horse, a cow, everything as domestic. So that means all animals that are basically, I consider them either uh, <clears throat> a pet or a, uh, I call it livestock, food animal, whatever, all classifies that. So if, if a dog comes on your property and kills a, quote, I would say any animal, it sounds like to me, then uh, the only animals that are exempt from that, as far as I can tell, that I would anticipate being on my property illegally would be a hunting dog, yeah. a coon hunter. Yeah, yes, ma'am. I, I believe that when you were reading earlier from the, the verbiage specifically was, while off the owner's property kills a domestic animal, provided that this subparagraph shall not apply, where the death of such domestic animal is caused by a dog that's working, training as a hunting dog, herding dog, or predator control dog. Is that it's, it seems like it makes an exception for a hunting dog, a herding dog, or a predator control yep, dog. Yes, ma'am. That, that verbiage <coughs> is, is in the dog classification division in the dog classification section of the ordinance, and that verbiage is drawn word for word for the state statute from the state statute regarding dog classification so that's a that's not a decision that we made to make those exceptions but state law specifically carves out exceptions for those dogs in terms of classification mm -hmm. now with regard to people coming onto your property or damage that's being caused by dogs that are owned by other people there's nothing in this ordinance that takes away any liability for any damage that would occur to your property. So you've said that you have you know, continually been in court and been doing yes. all of that with an attorney. That's something, that's, that's the right thing for you to do is to consult with an attorney about your rights, your private rights of action against the people that are causing damage to your property. <laughs> but with regard to the dog classification, those exceptions were drawn directly from state statute. So it just means that this dog, these dogs, and these people have total control over my property. No, yeah, I'm paying these expensive taxes here. No, ma'am. They don't have control over your property. You, they do. You they have, do. I have put up 12 strands of barbed wire to try and keep these people and these dogs out. 12 strands, don't you think that's excessive that I have to go to that point to do but, it? Yes, ma'am, maybe. But it's very excessive. I have to do that in order to keep them out. Right. But my, I try but, to. But my point is that this ordinance doesn't carve out an exception for them to do that. The only thing that this ordinance does is, is make it so that that animal is not classified as a dangerous dog and triggers other provisions of this ordinance. Mm -hmm. And that and that comes directly from state law. If somebody's coming onto your property illegally, if you have your property properly posted and they're bringing hunting dogs, then as you have done, you've contacted the authorities, you've had these people cited to court, that's the proper channel because they're basically breaking <coughs> and entering into your fences where you have, would have posted Oh yeah, property. they clearly crossed fences when they were, went to my bar and they were at least uh, probably a minimum of 1,500 feet inside so that's, that's the fence. A, as you indicated, that's a trespassing <laughs> issue that there's other protections for you as a property owner that's not specific to this ordinance. Mm -hmm. And so I'd like to know what's going to be done to people that continuously dump off animals. We're putting cameras out to start tracking now because it's got to the point where it's just it's overwhelming. Yeah, it is and, a big uh, problem. It is a huge problem, and I'd like to know, you know, there really should be some really strict laws on that. There really should be. And then also, I noticed on here this 
breeding one, allowing an, uh, you know someone to breed 30 animals with all the homeless animals and uh, without having to have a permit and be uh, looked at, I think that's excessive. That's real excessive. 30, if you can breed 30 animals and sell 30 cats or dogs, I'm not talking about cows, 30 cats or dogs, that's, those are the ones that's being dumped at my house. Yeah, I, I agree with you, but I think at, at some point, if my, 30 is a lot. At some point, if my recollection recalls, we, we were originally more restrictive with that section, but again, uh, state law and specifically state law regarding animal care, uh, the requirements of the, I'm trying to remember the executive agency that this applies to, it's either the Department of Agriculture or the Department of Natural Resources. Breeding 30 animals is under what, under state law, what triggers you to to get a permit with that executive agency. Mm -hmm. So that's the reason why we changed that to, to mirror state law. Again, uh, I, I believe originally it was more restrictive, but because there was outcry from the public about the ordinance being too restrictive and our inclination of wanting to err on the side of respecting people's property rights and their rights to breed their animals, we decided to go directly with what the but state But you realize requires. that those that are not being, not really being bred properly and stuff like that, in other words, if somebody else gets a hold of them, they end up at the pound or in my yard. See, this is what we're having. Because I can tell you, most of the animals that are dumped off, they look like they were uh, a mixture of something that was pure and half mutt, so someone's not, or cats, the same way. But I'm not satisfied with it. I'm just not satisfied with it. So I guess I need to go to my state representatives and the governor. So, thank you anyway. Thank you. Thank okay, you. Joe, who do we have so next? So the coon owners, hey, they got plenty of, plenty of time to have fun, don't they? I'm not staying. Yeah, yeah. Lamar Abbott? Yeah. Lamar Abbott? Okay. I tried. I tried. If we can get everyone's attention, he's not able to talk real loud, others want to hear, so if we can get everybody to be real quiet, please. But my, mine's real short. And it might help answer that lady's question. I had a dog put out at my house where I live. I live about four, four and a half miles from the pound, Walker County. <coughs> well, I, I Catch this dog up, finally, she tries to bite me. But I finally get her in my porter pad, so I said, I'll just take her over to the pound and let them have her. Nope, got a surprise there. Right. Pound won't take her. The lady there told me, <coughs> she said, what you got, sir? I said, I got this dog, and I told her <coughs> about it, where it come from, I knew where it come from, what county it come out of, and who I live. She said, I'm sorry, you've got it, you keep it. I said, no ma'am, I'm not keeping it. I don't want this dog, and this dog will bite you, and this dog will bite somebody else. She said, you're not leaving it here. Do what you want to do. I said, yes ma'am. So what do you suppose I done with it? I dug it back down there and throwed her out. Now who's at fault with that dog? Me? Or should I have killed her, keep her from biting somebody, or should they have taken that dog? I don't know. I don't know. What's the answer, Commissioner? <coughs> and I found out I'm not the only one that's happened to a to Pam Walker County. I found out since I talked to you and told you that. Now, I don't know the answer either. But if we've got a pound and they won't take your dogs, and you don't need it, it's going to bite you about one of your grandkid, grandkids. I got news for you. <coughs> if one comes here and tries to bite mine, I'll have to put a 22 bullet to it. I mean, that's all a slip. You've got to protect your place in your home. 
Can you show us? Well, we'll have to look a little further into to your specific issue that you mentioned to me. But I will say many times the shelter is at capacity and we have to stop receiving because the shelter was built to hold about 48 dogs. And many times we have 80 to 100. Uh, and so we get to the point we have to quit receiving all dogs of any type because we have nowhere to put them. We've got portable cages. We're putting them in hallways. We're putting them in offices with cages. And so many times we do get to capacity. I don't know if that's the case that you're speaking of. I, I don't know. But uh, most any given time, you can call out there and they'll have 70 to 90 dogs uh, at the kennel. So it, it's, a, it's a real problem. That's one of the reasons why we're trying to strengthen and fix our animal care ordinances because this is a real problem. Yeah, all I want to know is what do you do with them if they won't take them? What do you, that's all you can do. Well, thank you. Okay, Joe, who we got next? Gina Dorsett. were added for the dogs and tethering and any of those issues that I brought up. And I'm hearing tonight that you're mirroring the state laws. And I was told by the state representatives and Jeff Mullis that we can have stricter regulations in the county. That we don't have to mirror just state laws. So that's a real concern. Why are we just mirroring that? That's a big concern. Um, and since I didn't see anything, this is my last ditch effort to try and do something about what I started this in the very beginning almost two years ago. I live in Flintstone. I've been there for over 13 years. And a few years back, I saw two dogs. It turned out to be three, because another one was behind the house. But they were on heavy duty logging chains. Seven days a week, 365 days a year, 24 seven. It didn't matter what kind of weather it could be blasting hot, it could be freezing. I would take hay and blankets because I cried at night knowing those dogs were outside. Because I found out after going down to Atlanta and talking to Jeff Mullis and Representative Deffenbaugh that there's nothing that they can do. And they told me to come to the county commissioner and you could do something, and you could do it much faster. And I do appreciate that you are on this as fast and as quick as you are. Because I really believe, after all the research that I've done, I cared about those dogs. I do care about those dogs. But it's a public safety issue when dogs are on chains 24-7, 365 days a year, they cannot distinguish between a friend or an enemy. They have no way of knowing that. Why is somebody putting a dog on a chain and leaving them there? That's a big question. I think I know the answer, but I don't want to be so bold as to say that about somebody. So I want to say these points about chain dogs. They're social beings who thrive on interaction with people and animals. A dog kept chained for months or years suffers psychological damage. A continuously chained dog usually becomes anxious and aggressive. Their necks can become infected from too tight collars. Chains get tangled, strangling the dogs, they can't escape storms or attacking animals. <coughs> Chaining is a safety hazard for people. Dogs feel protective of their territory. 
When confronted with a perceived threat, their fight or flight instinct kicks in. A chained dog, unable to flee, often feels forced to fight and will attack children, and they mostly do, or otherwise others who cross the dog's territory. Tethered dogs suffer from sporadic feedings, overturned water bowls, inadequate vet care, lack of exercise, extreme temperatures. They must eat, sleep, and eliminate in one small area. Grass is beaten down into hard packed dirt. Chain dogs are easily ignored by their owners. Chaining is inhumane, says the U.S. Department of Agriculture. Quote, our experience in enforcing Animal Welfare Act has led us to conclude that continuous confinement of dogs by a tether is inhumane. A tether significantly restricts a dog's movement. A tether can also become tangled around or hooked on the dog's shelter, structure, or other objects, further restricting the dog's movement and potentially causing injury." <coughs> Un unquote. In 1997, USDA ruled that people and organi organizations regulated by the Animal Welfare Act cannot keep dogs continuously chained. The American Veterinarian Medical Association stated, quote, neither tether or chain your dog because this can contribute to aggressive behavior, unquote. The Centers for Disease Control concluded in a study, chain dogs are 2.8 times more likely to bite. The dogs most likely to bite are male, unneutered, and chained. According to the Association of Shelter Veterinarians Guidelines for Standards of Care in Animal Shelters, quote, tethering is an unacceptable method of confinement for any animal and has no place in humane sheltering. Consistent tethering of dogs in lieu of a primary enclosure is not a humane practice. Chain dogs can't <coughs> stop intruders. They're not good dog, guard dogs. All they can do is bark. Since most chain dogs are unsocialized, they are unable to distinguish a real threat from a friend. The best guard dogs live inside the home and are part of the family, which is how canine police dogs are raised. Animal control advocates receive hundreds of calls from citizens concerned about chained animals. Because chaining is legal, there's little officers can do to help. By the time it becomes clear, the case of the animal is often cruelty. It's often too late to save the dog. Prohibiting chaining makes a community safer by reducing the number of dog attacks and dog bites. A chaining law also gives officers a tool to crack down on illegal dog fighting, since most fighting dogs are kept chained. We have 22 states and several hundred U.S. communities, 14 Georgia counties have laws banning or regulating chaining. Of the 14, almost 400 million people reside in that, those areas. Nine with restricted, nine counties with restricted ordinances. Almost a million and a half. That's a total population of over 500 million people with tethering bans or tethering ordinances. We have an estimated population of over nine and a half million people in Georgia. So that's over 50% of Georgia residents live in communities with tethering restrictions. Chain dogs are also totally vulnerable to other animals and cruel people, and many chain dogs have been stolen, set on fire, shot, stabbed, tortured, or poisoned by cruel passerby or neighbors <coughs> who were annoyed by their barking. These are our so-called best friends, 
man's best friend. I think we really need to look at these ordinances. I think they lack a lot in protecting the people and our pets. We need to have stricter regulations. People need to be fined for <coughs> putting animals out, not taking care of their animals. They need to be held accountable. Lord knows the animal shelter could use the funds. Thank you. Well, thank you for coming. I know you've uh, been very much an advocate for animals and you do a lot of volunteer work <coughs> both locally and in Chattanooga both. I uh, appreciate your passion for the welfare of animals. As you well know, the previous ordinance that's still in play now uh, there's there's no restrictions or guidelines that address the tethering at all and that's a real problem and that's why our, our officers have not been able to address some of these issues that you've brought forward to us is because our hands are tied until we get this in place and there are restrictions and guidelines in here for tethering unfortunately uh, you feel like they should go a little further than they do and I, and I understand that and maybe over time maybe that that may happen but this is a good first start to put in those guidelines and regulations for tethering that currently today don't exist at all in Walker County. And so we are, we're making that first giant leap uh, because there are a, a lot of animals that are very well taken care of that are on tethers. I think most animals are. And you know, I know all, I not all of them. and far between. Not all of them that are tethered are on there 24 hours a day, uh, but there are some. And it's yeah. that small percentage that will cause the greatest problem and the greatest injury uh, because they're not socializing. You brought up a lot of very, very valid points about the negatives of when dogs are chained or tethered 24 seven or non-socialized and you're spot on with your information. But in the community that we have now, if we were to say no tethering or you can only tether for two or three hours, we would probably have about a thousand people in here saying, what are you doing? then why aren't we saying no chains? Why aren't we saying, you know? Well, there's there's a lot in here that dress how those tethers have to be and the lengths and, the and different things. So uh, we're, we're making that first big leap of something that currently is not on the books. And this county was established back in the early 1800s and we're just now getting to that point. So this administration is making a stride in the right direction to get to the point where you would like us to be, but we have to do this in steps and do it in moderation. And at this time, we feel like that uh, to get the vast majority of support, this is where we need to be with the tethering. Okay, Joe, who do we have next? Robert Klingen. That's, there's not any restrictions on quantity of any animals in this new ordinance at all. But, and that's what's going to go on. There's not going to be no... Right. There's no limit numbers of any type of animals. The ordinance is focused on what we were hearing from the public of you know, the care and well-being right. of, of the animals. With, with the exception of what was mentioned earlier, where if you breed a certain number of, right. of animal per year, that puts you underneath the state law requires you to uh, be registered with either the yeah, Department of Agriculture or the Department of Natural Resources, uh, one of those. And then talking about the dogs on chains and, and whatnot, I mean, I don't believe in chains either. My dog stays in my house. But the people that does have dogs, what are they going to do if they can't put them on chains? If they got dog houses, if they got this, that, and the other, they take them off the, the chain, then they're going to be roaming the neighborhood. And in my case, I've got chickens. And I, I'm friends with all my neighbors, and they know if my chicken comes in your yard and it offends you, do what you got to do. Same way with your dog coming in my yard. 
they bother too much, even I'm going to do what I got to do. So they got to do something for the dog's safety, as well as my safety and my kids' safety and my grandchildren's safety. And this ordinance does reflect that if, if someone takes their dog or if their dog gets off of their <coughs> personal property or property that someone has invited them to come visit, then they have to have that dog on a leash or tethered so they're not running loose or chasing cars. Right yeah. Okay. Uh, that's all I have. Sure, thank you. Thank you. Okay. <coughs> Charles Botts. to give public notice, hold two public hearings, and then the governing authority can uh, pass those ordinances, make changes to them, and uh, put them in place. So actually the residents really have no say in it. It uh, just depends on who they elect in the office. When they elect someone in the office, then that's giving those people authority to make the changes, right? That's right. Anytime you elect anyone to public office, you are putting your faith and trust and, and allowing them to make uh, decisions on behalf of the citizens for the roles that they're filling. I know it's that uh, way on. I'm like with the chief of police in the cities, you know, they, uh, they're not elected, they're appointed by the uh, town council. Appointed. In most cases, that's correct. And, uh, uh, but on the uh, paperwork and on the changes, uh, is there anywhere to pick up a copy of it? Because I don't have a computer and I wouldn't know how to operate one if I had one. We uh, brought some copies tonight or uh, you can stop by the commissioner's office in the morning. We can Where is that? Uh, right next door to the courthouse here on Duke Street, right on the corner. Uh, be, if you're facing the courthouse, it's the building on the left, okay. the commissioner's office. You can stop by there and get a copy. Right, uh, I have one or two more questions. So, yeah. uh, is, uh, well, as far as dogs, like four months, uh, four weeks ago, this past Tuesday night, I was awakening and a Malamute had killed uh, uh, several of my chickens. Uh, and I did raise game fowl, and yes, I did use to fight them. And uh, I'm not able anymore, but even uh, a few years ago, I signed a lease with a cow uh, tribe, which is protected by the federal government, where they have my chickens under lease. And, uh, and according to federal law, you know, uh, with the exception of uh, a few that I want to sell, then no one's allowed to remove them from the property without them getting uh, in touch with the uh, Kiowa Indian tribe, uh, which, uh, you know, they mail me, us, or was supposed to mail me a sign and put them in the yard. Uh, my lease has expired, but I'm going to get back on, uh, trying to get back so on. So you said this is an Indian tribe? <coughs> Which Indian tribe? The Kiowas. But uh, several Indian tribes have in Missouri. Uh, the Cherokee has a uh, has that type of release agreement, and the one that I'm uh, a member of is a Mississippi, but it's for all other states. So, uh, uh, when you join us and you bands to, to band them with, you put no winning in. It's just got KIA slash Georgia on the band, and it, and when you transport them, if you do transport them. Uh, you have to record those band numbers and write down whether it's a, a rooster, a hen, or a, or a baby chick, or whatever. And uh, so, uh, uh, but as far as dogs, four weeks ago when a dog came in and killed, uh, uh, not not my price them, but other people price them because uh, I, I don't sell them, uh, I don't advertise them for sale, but I do sell some occasionally. And, 14 hours after the dog came in, uh, a man from Texas called and uh, of a particular color that he wanted and the shape head and everything I only had to, which I told him earlier, I shipped him a pair of them uh, a few years ago and he said the rattlesnakes had killed his rooster. 
and whatnot. And uh, I still got him a phone where it, you know, he'd be willing to pay eight hundred, eight hundred fifty dollars for that one. And uh, he breeds them, and, and I think and almost certainly probably takes them to Mexico to buy them because it's legal there, you know. And uh, well, a week later, that same dog came back from Orchid Strange. It was uh, Tuesday morning again, and both times it was between two and three o'clock in the evening. And so I made a report of it over the pound, and they said there was nothing they could do about it. And that if I shot it to be sure that it died on my property. And you don't know unless you just completely take a doctor, you know, human or animal, any kind, take their head completely off their body or blow their heart out that they're going to die right there. Because uh, I know wild game animals that run hundreds of yards, even with a, a deadly shot to them. And I know men in Vietnam that was shot seven or eight times in the body and still carried some of uh, our friends, you know, to safety. Uh, so do you have any more questions on this particular ordinance? Yeah, yes, yeah, sir. And uh, well, when, that, when I said they wouldn't, couldn't do nothing about that, is it my place to get a, a live trap big enough to catch coyotes and try to trap a dog like that? And then if I do, and uh, do I call them to come and get it or take it to the pound or what? Is it going to cost me more to, uh, you know, which they, have, I'm sure they have a lot of traps there that they come over to sell my property to protect my animals uh, that I could sign for. And well, you, you have the right to protect your property. Oh, yeah, right. That's what they told me. But like if I shot that dog and he made it to a neighbor's property and died, she said, you, you're subject to be arrested. You know, I can't help how far that animal's out after I shoot it. That's the one I'm making. I don't want to shoot nobody's dog either, you know, because uh, I like animals. I got, I got a dog in my own. So are your chickens running loose or are they in cooks? No, at night time, uh, some of them are the hens for the young, but even the young that killed was roosting on top of cages about that high. And, and I guess they would just rare it up and, and get them off of them, you know, and kill them. They kill nine like that. And then one I had out, tied out so it could breed my hens on a tie cord. That's the one that's Mexican in Texas. Uh, I get to pull it, uh, broke the tie cord loose right there at, at the ground. I didn't find a rooster, I just found feathers everywhere. And then some of my hens that were sitting in nests that wasn't in cages, and you kill one of those. You know, but as long as they're on top, the, uh, you know, they shouldn't have a right to come over and kill them anyhow. And when I first, uh, the first time it came, when uh, it wasn't barking, I don't even know if Mallory used to bark or not. Uh, one time I ran around the he was trying to tear into a cage to get to one of my root roosters. And uh, of course he run when the light hit him, but the next time he come back, I had a gun, I aimed at him, pulled the trigger and said, oh, it's fired. But it was over then, 15, 20 feet of property line. If I had shot him, I'd have made it across the property. And uh, you know, then, then according to the lady at the uh, animal shelter, uh, I'm sorry to arrest. You know. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what the law is. Yeah, you know, which my neighbors, I, know, uh, I always go like five houses in any direction asking if my chickens bother or anything, and most of them said they're glad to run loose because he's in any bus. So. Yeah, you probably would want to check with the sheriff's department about that. I, I wouldn't know what your liability exposure would be. Okay. So maybe the, maybe the sheriff could give clarity but, to that. Uh, I can't think, I'd like to go pay for all that on the uh, okay. animal. Let's come by tomorrow. Uh, okay. okay. All right, thank you. Okay, Joe, who do we have next? All right, forgive me on this one because uh, sometimes it's hard to read cursive. Last name's Hicks. Right, okay. Is it Michael? Yes. Okay. generation on the farm. Uh, I'm six, be 65 August, been there all my life. Uh, like I said, next year will be 110 years we've been on the farm. 2016-2017 was cutting hay late, late at night, and the disc ball makes a racket when you're cutting. 
So at night, when we're cutting hay late, we have animals come in off the mountain, our wonderful DNR. Uh, last year, we got pictures of, we had two wolves, four coys, they brought wolves in and turned them loose, and they bred with coyotes, which is called a coy. Now, we had two wolves, four coys, and 10 coyotes in a 12 acre hay field. What I'm leading up to is we have some white Pyrenees dogs. We're running over 200 acres of grass. We got cattle, we got livestock. And these Pyrenees dogs, I took them out and tried to show them where the fences was, but they don't understand that crawling on the fence across the road goes to the next pasture. Uh, we've had to go pick our dogs up, and this was when Beebe was in, had to go pick them up, and you're talking about stricter rules, well, what did it cost us back in the farm? About $40, $40 a dog 40 to get a damn dog back. And the- <coughs> You didn't pick that and take it to the shelter? Took it to the shelter, had to pay $40 a piece, was warned the next time would be $80 a piece. The third time, we was going to court. I got upset, paid fine, got my dogs back home. One of the neighbors across the ridge had, had caught the dog, called them, and I understood. So I went and talked to all my neighbors, and they know what the dogs are. With you understand the problems we're having with all the coyotes and all the wild animals that's coming on the farm, we even had trouble last fall. I got a trapper in. The darn coyotes are coming on the porch of the house killing cats. And I'm sorry if my dog strays off a little bit and everything, but the darn dog catchers lives in the neighborhood. They can show a courtesy and call me when they see my dog somewhere. Arnold's had them pick his dogs up. John Howard has had him pick them pick his dogs up. He ain't here tonight and he asked me to talk about it. And we could be neighbors and they know that it's our dogs. Why can they not call us and tell us, hey, your dog's down here, come pick your dog up. I even got to chain the dog up during the daytime, turning him out at night. He's doing his job. And we're having all these animals coming into the house. The trapper this year, got our last dog, got to catch him bobcats. The bobcats was coming up under my shoulders. But when we turned the bobcats loose, they ain't hurting them. But the thing I'm in here about is, uh, we've got two dog catchers in our neighborhood. They need to be neighbors and leave us alone when our dogs is causing problems. They need to come to us. When you run for election, I have signs up all over the farm and I backed you all I could. And my neighbors did too. Now we expect a little appreciation back when our dogs is around the neighborhood somewhere. Any neighbors calls us, I'm right there to get the dogs and get them back to the farm. I'll leave them chained up for about a week. That's my only gripe about what I was going on. And like I said, with all the animals, dangerous animals that's coming off the DNR, and like I said, I know for a fact they brought the wolves in and turned the wolves loose. One of my neighbor's wives pulled up the laptop and showed them, guess what breeds with the wolves? They only brought females in. They breed with coyotes. Their offsprings are coys. And I guarantee you, you people live in town, you got them in the yard at night. And the coys ain't scared of a person. They ain't scared of a lot. A lot. They will attack you in your yard. So what I'm, the point, main point I'm getting to is, we've been on our farm next year, it'll be 110 years. If we're having to run dogs, we're running close to 100 head of cattle. We've even got a miniature herd that's uh, not over 34 inches tall. We really have to watch them while we got them in the yard at the house. We need to have a courtesy that if our dog does get out in the neighborhood, they don't have to drag pound or I go over and get it and they get real smart at me at the pound, which they did. But this is this was way before your turn. Well, like I said, the boys that live in our neighborhood, they need to show us a little courtesy and be neighbors. When's the last time you'd go to the pound and pick one up? What was it? How long have you been in? Seventeen months. Well, it was what, four or five years ago when they got on the sabbatical? Probably about three. They got on the back. Picking her dog up and thing. one of the neighbors uh, even one of the neighbors across the street said, we've got pictures of your dogs in the backyard. <coughs> well, in a pair, they stroke. That's their neighbor. They're, I mean, they're, what am I hunting? Are they they're all breathing. They're, they're going to roam. They ain't nothing you can do. But you got to let them roam. They run the pastures and stuff. <coughs> and, uh, but like I said, uh, we need to be show courtesy because the area that we're living in, Karen's sitting there, it's dangerous where we live. 
And if we got dogs out trying to do our perimeter, that the, I've had to go lay your donkey jazz get my dog two or three times. I reckon he thinks he can go get dinner down there. But the people are feeding him at a store, so I've got him on a chain and turn him loose at night and put him up the next day. But us farmers that have Pyrenees dogs that is with our livestock and helping, we need to be left alone. Well, there are protections in this ordinance for that very thing okay. that, that was added to protect the farmers that have herding dogs yeah. because that, that's a working dog. Yeah. And so we added protections in here for that. Yeah. yeah. To, to address exactly what you're talking about. That's all we've got. Okay, good. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. That's it? Okay. Let's see here. <coughs> Okay, the next part of our public hearing is number two for Kim T. and uh, Patty Morgan requests a rezone from A1 Agriculture to R2 Residential for property located at 2474 <coughs> Highway 201 Rocky Face, Georgia 30740, tax map 0570-035. Joe, do we have anyone that signed up to speak for that? Was there, we don't have anyone listed that signed up. Is there anyone, just to make sure we can cover things, that wanted to speak in opposition of this rezone? Or is the members of this property here? Okay, so there's no one here to speak on this on either direction. Okay. Okay, at this time we'll, we'll adjourn our public hearing. Okay, at this time I'm going to call us to order. It's uh, still, for our record, still Thursday, May the 24th at 6.57 p.m. Uh, we will go into uh, our minutes of approval of our last meeting on May the 10th, 2018. Uh, uh, all of this information and packets uh, is on our website. And also we brought over, I think, 30 copies of this. We knew we'd have a few people here tonight, but... Uh, I don't know if we had enough copies for everybody to go around. But I do have the minutes from the prior meeting that was on May the 10th. Uh, was there any uh, corrections or changes or any comments on these minutes before we sign these into the record? Hearing none, we'll go ahead and approve these minutes into our, our record. Uh, several action items here, but I'm going to take the liberty to uh, go to the end of the agenda and cover a couple of proclamations. We've got some people here for these proclamations, and I told them due to some other commitments that they have that I would honor their uh, desire for these proclamations to uh, be handled first. So I'm going to read the first one, proclamation about our honeybee festival week. It says, by the sole commissioner of Walker County, Georgia, a proclamation honeybee festival week, whereas the honeybee is essential to the life and the commerce and planet earth, providing essential pollination to plants and adding to the value of crops around the world. And whereas the city of Lafayette brings attention to the importance of preserving the honeybee population and sees the honeybee population <coughs> as a parallel to preserving the life of our community, and whereas the city of Lafayette hosts the annual Honeybee Festival on the first Saturday of June as a way to be a positive change in the community this year falling upon June 2nd, 2018, whereas the Honeybee Festival features performances by local musical talent and areas designated especially for children, a barbecue competition, a baking contest, a metric century bike ride, a cruise in featuring an array of antique tractors, unique art, and craft vendors and provides an opportunity for local beekeepers to educate the public about bees as well as exhibit and display locally produced honey. Whereas the annual Honey Bee Festival is a free to attend community event and attracts thousands of individuals who would 
not otherwise know about the extraordinary opportunities to live, work, and play in our community. Therefore, I, Shannon K. Whitfield, so Commissioner of Walker County, Georgia, do hereby proclaim May 27th through June 2nd as Honey Bee Festival Week in Walker County, Georgia. And witness thereof I have hereunto set my hand and caused a seal of Walker County to be affixed, affixed to this the 24th day of May in 2018. I will sign this. <laughs> and we'll get our uh, clerks and test this. And I know we've got several of you here, so who wants to speak first? <laughs> Everybody's pointing. <laughs> they're all pointing at you. Are there any bees in this? <laughs> they're, not, they're not taking care of it. <laughs> so, uh, you're never lost for words about the honeybee. You got anything you want to say or promote about the honeybee festival? Yes. Um, it is a great event. Start on the bike that morning at 8 o'clock. Ride with the mayor. He's going to lead the group. The short um, group. The short group. Right. <laughs> Not the long group. He's getting the long group. Yeah. Getting Not the long group. Yeah. And we're looking forward to you leading the group for the whole county. I don't think that's <laughs> and then you get to go enjoy all the festivities, the food, the fun, the music. Um, it's an incredible event for our area. We're very blessed to have it. Anything else to add? It's all day. Well, let's get a picture real quick. We've got a couple of uh, pre signed copies here. I uh, normally would charge you for my signature, Mayor, but uh, since you're you, you, a good guy, you do charge. <laughs> uh, check out their website, Facebook page, and it'd be great for you to come out and participate. Okay, we're going to do our second proclamation. Uh, this is one that's very important to our community and one that's very dear to my heart. This is by Soul Commissioner of Walker County, Georgia, Proclamation Foster Care Month. Whereas there are 15,000 children and youth in foster care in Georgia, being provided with safe, secure, and stable homes, along with compassion, nutrients, and the, of the foster family, and whereas all young people in foster care need a meaningful connection to a caring adult who becomes a a supportive, supportive and lasting presence in their lives, and whereas foster, kinship, and adoptive families who open their homes and their hearts and support children whose families are in crisis play a vital role in helping children and families heal and reconnect, thereby launching young people into successful adulthood. And whereas, uh, directed, uh, excuse me, Dedicated foster families frequently adopt foster children, result, resulting in a greater need for more foster families, whereas there are numerous individuals and organizations working to increase public awareness of this need of children in and leaving foster care, and the foster care system is only as good as those who choose to serve. I, Shane Whitfield, so Commissioner of Walker County, Georgia, do hereby proclaim May as Foster Care Month in Walker County, Georgia, and urge all citizens to come forward to do something positive that will help change a lifetime for children and youth in foster care. In witness thereof, I here unto set my hand and cause the seal of Walker County to be affixed this 24th of May in 2018. Folks, this is, uh, this is something very important in our community. Uh, there's a lot of our children that are in displaced homes. Uh, I have a little guy in my house that we've had for the last four years. He's seven years old, and uh, he's become a big part of our immediate family, <coughs> and he's just one of thousands out there. So as it says in this proclamation, there's... There's about 15,000 children in our state alone that are displaced, that, uh, that need a loving family. So uh, there's nothing like it. If you're not a foster parent, ever have a desire, I'm sure that uh, it's something that uh, Department of Family Children's Services would be happy to assist you with and help get you involved. 
So is there anyone here from the Department of Family Children's Services or any other group that would like to speak? You got the whole crew here. Got the whole crew. All right. That's how we roll. <laughs> My name is Natasha Christian. I am the resource developer here in Walker County, which means I just monitor, I recruit for foster homes and I monitor them. Um, we have some of our foster parents here. There's a foster parent. Stand up. <laughs> and uh, we have a co-worker here sharing God lives. So we're just very happy to be here that this is Foster Care Month. We have about 26 foster homes in Walker County. We need a whole lot more. We have 162 children. Um, we have about, what, 61 in Walker County, so that means the remaining are in Region 1 or beyond in South Georgia. So we need to bring our kids home, right? Absolutely. We need to bring our kids here to go to school and see their parents and reunite with their parents. So we're, we're very thankful to be here tonight. Well, thank you. Well, let's all get a picture together. Let's see. Why don't we step back here to give a little more room? So okay, that's the fun stuff we get to do. Bring awareness to important things in our community. Okay, we're going to go back in order of our business here and keep all these papers straight. Um, new business item number one approval or or disapproval of rezone requests for Kim T and Patty Morgan request a rezone from A1 Agriculture to R2 Residential for property located at 2474 Highway 201 Rocky Face, Georgia 30740 map impartial 0 47035. Uh, the, uh, this did go before our planning and zoning committee. That was the first public hearing and it was properly advertised. Uh, once that process goes, it comes to the commissioner's office. And uh, based off of the recommendation, and since there was no one here supporting this, and I think I've been told that the applicant uh, was going to accept what the Planning and Zoning Commission decided to do. So at this time, we're going to uh, deny this request. Is that about a mountain cottage? No, this is about a property. Um, on Rocky Face on uh, Highway 201. Okay, item number two is a resolution R-02, excuse me, R-012-18, consideration of the Walker County Animal Care Ordinance. Commissioner, that should read ordinance R-02. Okay, that's great. Yeah, and it is on the proper document here. Um, okay, and then it's over here on this side. So we got a lot of paper here tonight. Yeah, that's part of this here, correct? Right? Okay, yes, on the uh, minutes, or excuse me, on the agenda, it does say resolution, but this is an ordinance. And it does reflect that on the document here. It says ordinance number R-12-18, an ordinance amending chapter 10 of the County Code of Ordinance on Animals to establish an ordinance setting clear standards for pet ownership and control to provide for care of animals to provide for procedures for the control and classifications of dangerous animals to update chapter 10 of the County Code of Ordinance uh, to conform with state law and for other such purposes, whereas sole commissioner of Walker County is the governing authority for Walker County, Georgia, 1939 Georgia Law Number 39, and whereas OCGA 4-8-1 uh, 
especially OCGA 4-822 requires counties to designate officers charged with enforcement of state law regarding classification of dangerous and vicious dogs and whereas OCGA 4-11-1 and especially OCGA 4-1118 provides for enactment and enforcement of county ordinances concerning care of domestic animals and whereas the public has made an outcry about problems relating to roaming dogs, dangerous and vicious dogs, and mistreatment of animals within Walker County, Georgia, and whereas the governing authority has hosted four public hearings to listen to public regarding uh, needed animal ordinances on this subject matter and has posted drafted has posted drafts on the county website and has elected public uh, public feedback regarding the proposed changes and therefore be it resolved the commissioner as follow passed and adopted this the 24th day of May 2018 uh, I want to thank again uh, all the residents of Walker County that has taken part of this process we've had uh, I think our first meeting was about 83 people. Uh, the second meeting we had over uh, 225 people, had about 40 people speak. Uh, we've got close to a hundred uh, emails off the website. Uh, we've gone through those in great detail and uh, there was a lot of great suggestions, a lot of things that made a positive impact to make this ordinance stronger, to make it more acceptable to our community and to get the broad support. Uh, one of the big things, as you heard some comment tonight, that was changed, there was in the original draft, was some uh, call for limitation of number or quantity of animals. That was removed completely, except there are those provisions we discussed about the breeding of animals to match up with state law. But this will give our enforcement officers uh, the ability, uh, starting the f uh, June the 1st, to be able to enact these new ordinances and hopefully bring better care for the animals in Walker County. <clears throat> uh, Clark will attest to that. Okay, item number three, resolution R-01318, declaring property of the Walker County Sheriff's Office as unserviceable surplus and removed from the county inventory. See attached Exhibit A. Uh, exhibit A, this was a memo sent over from the sheriff, dated May 15th, subject item, subject equipment. Please declare the following equipment unserviceable surplus and removed from the county inventory. This equipment has been stored at the Walker County Maintenance Barn to be auctioned off at the next county auction. Uh, Continental Commercial Clothes Washing Machine recently moved from service in the Walker County Jail. Model number EH040L1101111. Serial number 147026413070. Uh, we do have to do a resolution for these anytime we're disposing of uh, county property. Resolution R1319, Resolution of Walk County Commission, whereas it has been determined by the Walk County Commissioner's Office that certain property described in the list attached in Exhibit A has become excess of no use for the purpose which it was intended, whereas it is evident that the property should be declared unserviceable. Uh, un unusable, unserviceable, and surplus of Walker County. Now, therefore, be resolved. <coughs> I, Walker County Commissioner Shannon Whitfield, hereby declare the subject property unusable, unserviceable, and surplus, and no use to the county. Be it further resolved, it's hereby resolved that the said excess property be disposed of and that this de declaration be entered into the minutes of the county record and properly recorded in the county's property inventory records be resolved the 24th day of May 2018 by Shannon Whitfield, so commissioner, attested by our clerk. Well, as it stated, this property will uh, be auctioned off to the highest bidder at the next county auction. Date and time to be determined once we get more items to auction. Okay, <coughs> last action item. Resolution R1418, amending the Walker County Tax Commissioner's budget to remove funds from operation and move those over to capital. So I'll read this and then give you some narrative about this as well and our tax commissioner's here tonight she may have some additional comments also possible 
Resolution R14-18, resolution amending the fiscal year 2018 budget to reallocate $5,000 from the general ledger account number 100.1545.1512003030 to capital funds for the tax commissioner, whereas OCGA 36-81-3 provides for the county to adopt a summary line item legal level of budgetary control whereby the governing authority controls county spending and whereas resolution R-1917 establishes the legal level of budgetary control for Walker County. At the summary, excuse me, summarize objective classification levels, e.g. personnel expense, operational expense, and capital out outlay. And whereas the tax commissioner has requested that a budget change from operational expenses to capital outlay in the amount that would allow compliance with the state mandated unfunded, and I say again, unfunded mandate transactions from the current operation software used by the tax commissioner's office for the drive record and integrated vehicle enterprise system uh, acronym of drives software system, and whereas as available amount to be moved from operational expenses without interfering with the operation is $5,000 from the energy line item and whereas the tax commissioner and her staff has been working very hard to prepare for full implementation of the drive system on May 27, 2019. Therefore be it hereby resolved that I, Walker County Governing Authority hereby amend the FY 27-18 budget to reallocate $5,000 from the general ledger account number 100.1545.5312.00.30 to the tax commissioner's capital outlay budget this day, this the 24th day of May 2018, Shannon K. Whitfield, so Commissioner of Walker County. What this resolution is talking about is our state legislation and uh, governor's office has put into play a new software system to be utilized at the tax commissioner's office and they've made this mandate and they've put these timelines in place for this to be implemented but they didn't send no money with it and so they uh, have put the burden of this back on the local government to find the funding to do this and so this is not the full cost uh, to be able to implement this but this will give the tax commissioner some funding that she needs in order to purchase the uh, the hardware that's needed to be able to implement this so uh, we both followed this very much in detail through the legislative process we kept hearing rumors that the state was going to allocate funds for this uh, went back and forth um, a lot of uh, jockeying i guess for position at the state level for dollars uh, this did not make the, uh, the budget at the state level. So there again, this burden was put back on the local citizens. And so uh, we started looking to figure out where we was going to get this funding from. And so we spent a good amount of time trying to figure out where in our balanced budget we were going to come up with $5,000 uh, that we needed to be able to supplement the additional capital outlay that was needed. Uh, we found that uh, look like in the budget that uh, utility electrical expenses were going to come in for less than what had been budgeted. So basically what we're doing here, we're not increasing the budget for the tax commission. We're basically taking funds and moving from one category down to another category to give the tax commissioner the funding to move forward with that purchase request. Commissioner, is anything additional you'd like to add? I guess I have one statement. Without this, nobody in Walker County can title a car or get a tag. So it's required by the state. They're going to kill the old system off this time next year. If we don't have our equipment in and our staff trained, we all in Walker County have a problem. I hate it, but that's what the state's done. Very well said. Okay. All right. Okay. At this time, that uh, ends our regular scheduled meeting. We adjourn our regular meeting. We're going to take a uh, short recess, and then we're going to come back and open up the floor to any open discussion.